What is up guys, the Strong Boys 19 here, and welcome back to the Mastodon discography. And as you did see from my community section post on my channel that I did make a poll of which band I should continue to do the discography of. And Mastodon being the main winner, I just want to come back to this band and I am going to be continuing the discographies for the other bands that were from the poll. The Megadeth discography was a very close second, but it was awarded to Mastodon. And with that being said, I am going to be reviewing the band's third studio album entitled Blood Mountain. So Blood Mountain did release to the world on the 12th of September in the year of 2006. This is the follow-up album to their progressive metal sludge concept album masterpiece that was 2004's Leviathan. I will have to say that while Leviathan has been known to many fans as one of the best albums in the band's discography, Blood Mountain is without any question and circumstance known as well as one of the band's best works. This is possibly and arguably one of their beginnings where they went very experimental. This is their second album as in part of their concepts. And according to Troy Sanders, if I may quote, it's about climbing up a mountain and the different things that can happen to you when you're stranded on a mountain, in the woods, and you're lost, you're starving, hallucinating, running into strange creatures, you're being hunted, it's about that whole struggle. And this is also the third album in the band's discography to have a separate element. This album represents the earth element, whereas with Leviathan being water and Remission was on fire. And I will say that this album is personally one of the band's best albums and the concept of this is absolutely interesting as it does move into a deeper, very darker move of presentation and the atmosphere that was surrounding a lot on this album was matching things extremely comfortably. And as well as that this production on the album is one of my top three favourites from Mastodon's work. This production was done by Matt Bales, who has done the production involving other bands with Isis, Soundgarden, amongst many more. And I adore this style of production. It is just so crisp and it's full of this wide wall of sound, I guess, type of description. But every time I play this album, it really was just a beautiful sounding record. And I would definitely mark this as another really strong album for this type of tone. The opening song, The Wolf Is Loose, just some wonderful drumming on the introduction, and then the music, as well as the manic sounding vocals, were blasting as it was just always erupting with a lot of attention. This track begins the album with a bang, and I admire this song all the time. To me, this is a masterpiece of an opening track because it's such a well crafted, controlled, and rhythmic brilliance of pure action all at once. This involves a brilliant variety on the riffing and the drumming is making it very tight with this wide sound. The second track of Crystal Skull. This type of beginning is a very percussive sepultura type of sound. Every time I listen to this opener it makes me think about that type of flavour in their in their home country where Sepultura makes the style of music and when the music bursts in on this track the band did decide to add in a complex way of speed and they were making these parts syncopate all each other. The cleaner vocals 
on this type of music were making things quite interesting and a different tone. And I do really appreciate the variation of the tone of vocals that works so well on the instrumentation. Troy Sanders' vocals were savage on this one, and it's just a big rumbling bridge section as well. The solo from Brent Hines was fantastic. This is another track that features Scott Kelly from Neurosis, as he did do guest vocals previously on one of the tracks from the Leviathan album. One of the other masterpieces of this album is this third track, the magnum opus Sleeping Giant. I adore this song. This is on a minor, weary, atmospheric type of mood and setting. You can hear the bass, the gong cymbal, as well as the acoustic guitars from the beginning, and it paints such a wicked picture. A wonderful setting onto some kind of a journey on the instrumentation. The melody is also brilliant, with these various guitar lines as well as vocal performances when the whole song moves in. Brent Hines' vocals were just expressive with his own mood, and Troy's were just as excellent. This is quite a progressive number with such a strong balance, wicked whole spread of presentation that it works. This track is, to me, one of the top three best tracks on Blood Mountain. The next track of Capillarian Crest, perfect set of drumming, and the bass prominent tone on this track. There were multiple different time signatures all around here, and it creates a diverse way of experimentalism from the skills and tons of lead guitar work. Fucking amazing part of this track. A really destructive, multiplying, eruption sounding riffs. Intensity. It's an intensity of a track that I absolutely do adore very much. The next track on the album, which is Circle of Sasquatch, another really, really good one. This is another one of the heavier moments onto this entire album, brooding and brutal at the same time. The bass tone on this song was thick and heavy, and there were tons of these guitar layers that were just absolutely perfect. There's also a weird part in this track that you hear these noisy vocoder, vocal type of tone, and I I was just like in, in a bit of a weirded out type of thing when I had first heard that. But it, it does have a separate sound that I really, really do appreciate. So I think that Circle of Sasquatch being another one of the other crushing and great songs on the album, I will have to say it is one of those moments where the experimentalism did decide to move forward. The instrumental track on the album of Blade Catcher, this is just as wild with a lot of punishing, mad fruitions, and this is just as frantic. It's a frantic sound onto these weird keyboardish kind of sounds. I believe that is a keyboard type of sound, but it was matching with these absolutely amazing melodies and strong guitar rips and licks. The drumming from Brandela was so massive and the sound was just all extreme in chaos and this is another one of the other phenomenal tracks on the album just because of musicianship and this is one of the other highlights on the album for me. The single on the album, Colony of Birchmen, this track Track title-wise is basically like a similarity type of title because Genesis has done a track of the Colony of Slipper Men from their Lamb Lies Down on Broadway concept album. And I really like that they decide to change the title and name this track the Colony of Birchmen. I think that's a very good idea. But this is personally the very first Mastodon song that I did hear and seen from the music video. This is a great, great song. These verse sections were booming with the drumming and the bass to this song, along with the riffs, were so groovy with these palm muting, driving presence. And the vocals, to me, 
are extremely memorable and the bridge section of this track onto the vocal harmonies were making it like an ominous sound that is beautiful at the same time. This does feature Josh Homme from Queens of the Stone Age slash Caius fame on this track. This is, to me, an excellent number. It's very catchy as well. Hunters in the Sky, I find this track to be very underrated because after following the previous track of Colony of Birchmen, this opening sound monstrous on the riffage. Troy's performance was powerful on this song. And while it was another crushing song at that, the wicked tone on the guitars and the song was making such a delivery that I personally will address. It follows Colony of Birchmen extremely perfectly. And I think Hunters in the Sky, another one of the other aggressive natures of music on this album, is one of my favourites. Hand of Stone. This is to me, really, really terrific on the technicality side, and again, on the musicianship, the time signatures were an advanced way, but what was amazing about this particular number is that they're growing a ton of these well-arranged and slick moves as the instrumentation goes in, a precise and irresistible way of direction, and personally, I think that Hand of Stone is really really good of a song but personally into my experience with the earlier tracks they were to me much more uh, attachable and memorable but i really do enjoy a lot of hand of stone this mortal soil this opens things again beautifully on the phased guitar tone twin guitar harmonies and i love how warm and smooth it did sound at the start Vocally, Troy on the higher range was really, really expressive again, and it's comfortable, and as well as Brent Hines' vocals on this that were full of rhythm and well-timed. There were tons of these different sections involving the guitars into this kind of heavy metal style that it's quite an adventurous yet diverse type of presentation, and I find that this Mortal Soil has a lot of these separate pieces of music that there's not a moment where they, they would miss a beat, miss a great musical standout point. This Mortal Soil is one of the other extremely great examples that they do explore things in such a well-crafted and inspired type of fruition. Penultimate song of this album is Siberian Divide. This does credit Cedric from At The Drive-In slash The Mars Volta as well on vocal guest and I think he did a brilliant job onto the softer, cleaner parts of this track while the music when he sings was just resonating and so soothing. Stunning musicianship and performances went along here. The later pass on the track starts things at first being really gentle but then they just erupt again onto some more sludging, groovy brutalities. And this is one of the other really melodic numbers in terms of the way the vocals portray on this album. And I really, really do love this one. This is just, to me, a near perfect penultimate number on the album. And the last track, the final track in the Elephant Man trilogy of Pendulous Skin. This is really acoustic driven and there's tons on these very layered effects phases to delays and a difference in terms of the sound of vocals in the production it's at a slower pace this time and obviously being the slowest number on the record it was all so comfortable and if i have to really pick which track from the trilogy is my favorite i mean joseph merrick was just gorgeous and this one is very, very, very good to finalise this album. But I think it would have to be the, the first one from the trilogy, from the Remission album. But Pendulous Skim really nails things. Soft and great finale point to close the album. And obviously, with the many minutes of silence, the 
voice message right at the end of the album is Josh Homme. His message is uh, is pretty funny, actually. And uh, if that would have been entirely left out and removing the minutes of silence after Pendulous Skin, I wouldn't be bothered by it because, you know, Pendulous Skin was really the track that has to get the most attention out of. But other than that, Pendulous Skin to finish off Blood Mountain is terrific. It's a terrific yet great finale, po finale piece to close off the album. Blood Mountain by Mastodon is excellent. It is an excellent album from start to finish, and if there's one gripe that I have with the album, personally for me, while I think that albums like Remission to Crack the Sky and Leviathan, these types of albums for me are extremely memorable. I love a lot of the album of Blood Mountain. Don't get me wrong about that. There's sometimes a point on the album where it kind of lacks in that type of way, has a lacking sense of the ability on a memorable presence. And I think that the first half of this album is the better half. The second half where they explore things even further, to me, is amazing. But the first half of the album is perfection. From The Wolf Is Loose to Blade Catcher. But the second half, from the later direction of the album, it's to me still just as awesome. But for me, Blood Mountain is not one of the other classic albums. However... Having said that, this is still one of my top five favourite Mastodon albums in the discography. I'm going to give Blood Mountain by Mastodon a very high 9 out of 10. It would have been a 9.5 out of 10, but I think 9 out of 10, for me, is very acceptable. And I also do recommend the making of videos with Mastodon making Blood Mountain. It's just as a wonderful documentary, and if you haven't checked that out yet as well, please check it out, look it up on YouTube, and watch all of it. It's a brilliant way of documenting a very strong, prolific piece of art of an album. That's all I would like to say on Blood Mountain by Mastodon. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll keep you guys posted for more videos in the near future.